we have Leon who left this message. My question is in regards to 1 Corinthians 6 and 3. Um, could Pastor Brogy explain exactly what it would mean by we will judge angels? And also another question, if he could elaborate exactly um, what does it mean um, to gossip? Can you, if you could define what that word means. All right. These are great questions. So let me read contextually the statement that the Apostle Paul makes. He starts in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 1. Does any one of you, when he has a case against his neighbor, dare to go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? So you had some people who in the early church, they had a problem with a brother in the church and so they, we would say in modern terminology, they sue them. They take them to court. And Paul says, or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? If the world is judged by you, are you not competent to constitute the smallest law courts? And I would echo the truth today when you have a problem with a brother in the church or a sister in the church, you don't go find a lawyer and sue him. That's like the worst testimony in the world. And over the years, we've had what we call sometimes elder court, so to speak. For instance, we had a lady who um, said that one of our church members, who was a contractor, did some substandard work. And of course, uh, she said, I don't want to sue this man, but I, she attended another church in another county but I want to um, bring this man to the elders of the church. And she did. And as it turned out, um, it was a problem with the contractor. And we said to him, look, you need to make this right. This is what you promised. And of course, many times a problem with uh, people doing work for you is it's not in writing. And then it's a matter of he said, she said, and it's a matter of memory and other issues where it shouldn't be. But we said to this brother, I, we, we believe that she is right and you need to honor this and you need to rectify the situation, which he did. Um, and that was important. And so we weren't dragging some member before some attorney, which in and of itself, if that's as far as it went, would be a terrible testimony when some brother gets an attorney to sue a church. He's doing what's evil, and he's coming under the discipline of God. You can expect it if he really knows the Lord. That just is such a wicked thing to do. And so God will go on and say, do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more matters of this life? So if you have law courts dealing with matters of this life, do you appoint them as judges who are of no account in the church? I say this to your shame. It is so that there is, is it, is it so that there is not among you one wise man who will be able to discern between the brethren, but brother goes to law with brother and that before unbelievers. Actually, then it is already a defeat for you. Um, that you have lawsuits with one another. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? In other words, he's saying it would be better to be wronged and defrauded than to smear the precious name and testimony that we bear as believers before an unbelieving world that desperately needs to know salvation. And so they end up pointing the finger at us. I mean, you Christians, you can't even get along when Jesus said, by this all men will know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So how will we judge angels? And there's debate there because Paul doesn't go on to explain it. So I'm not going to be guilty of eisegesis. Some would say, well, he's talking about we're going to judge demons. I doubt that because it appears, for instance, when the head demon is judged, he just cast directly into the lake of fire. And no doubt that's the same time when those angels who are free to wage war will also be cast in there with him. He's representative of the whole. So most would not say that this is in reference to uh, fallen angels, but most would say this is in reference to holy angels. And that's the position I would take. Look, you have angels who the writer of the Hebrews says are ministering servants sent out to render you know, care for those of us who are saved, who will inherit the completion of our salvation. So there's angels in the invisible realm that are serving the church today. And God 
will spare, you know, a lot of heartache in life through angels, and most of it we're unaware of. Uh, Paul said, or excuse me, the writer of the Hebrews said that you can entertain an angel, not even be aware of it. And there again, contextually, he's talking about holy or elect angels that serve the body of Christ. And I think it's quite appropriate that God would allow us to be involved in some of their service evaluation because he wants to reveal his greatness, his providence, his care, his love, where we thought God really wasn't even involved in looking when in reality he was. But in terms of the logistics and the finer points, I'm not going to be guilty of reading into the scripture what it doesn't say. Uh, I've given you to some respect my opinion there. Uh, So eternity future will reveal it, but you don't want to miss the point. And the point of the passage is if we can judge the greater then we can certainly deal with lesser issues. And that's one of the greater lesser issues of logic that Paul uses. Sometimes he goes from a lesser to a greater issue. Sometimes he goes from a greater to a lesser issue. If we can do the big thing, the greater thing, judge even angels, then certainly we can discern the problems that we have with one another in the church. I'm not saying that all all suits are wrong, but when it comes to a believer— um, yeah, you know, the scripture warns against that and that's what we need to be careful of. Let's go to the next question. Well, it, oh, also, oh, Leon oh, wants gossip. to know what does it mean yeah, to gossip? Yeah, yeah um, <clears throat> it's sharing information with someone who's really not a part of the problem or a part of the solution, very simply said. So if you have a problem with your brother, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to not go to your Bible study and say, hey, you know, I want to tell you about so-and-so, and I want you to pray for him and make it even sound spiritual, and you can gossip through the prayer chain. Um, when in reality, if you have a problem with your brother, you go in quiet, and you reprove him quietly. And if he doesn't listen then you take two or three, and if he doesn't listen, then you bring it to the church. And really, if we just followed that simple procedure in the local assembly, you wouldn't have all this gossip. But it's a, it's an expression of the sin nature, and God warns about it. And it's not just a problem with women. It's a problem with men. People say, well, women gossip, you know. Um, men do too. And so we need to... Uh, carefully way, but when we are sharing information with someone who's not a part of the problem or a part of the solution, then we are technically cross the line into gossip, and sometimes it moves even into slander because it's not true. Dr. Carl Brogy answers your questions about the Bible and living the Christian life Tuesday mornings at 11 on The Light, 88.7 FM, and online around the world at wagp.net.